In this session of the Purple Coffee Podcast, I speak to Greg Hickman about the importance of niching and niching again and finding that all important. Yes, you've got it. Niche. <laughs> Hello and welcome to session 51 of the Purple Coffee podcast, inspiring stories from some of the world's finest. I'm your host, Turn Dog, and on today's edition, I speak to Greg Hitman, who is a bit of an authority figure when it comes to mobile marketing. He hacks a great deal of his life. He is a rather transparent fellow shares a lot about how he grows his business on his blog and it's something I hope you check out. I'll be telling you how you can do so soon. But first, a little bit more about him. Well, Greg is all about mobile marketing. He helps businesses and fellow entrepreneurs alike improve their mobile marketing. He's a speaker himself, a podcaster, a blogger, a writer, a bit of an all-round go-getter. And when it comes to online business, he knows a thing or two. And I was lucky enough to speak to Greg and get him to share his great mistake in aid of the success of mistake, a book I've been writing for some time now and it's getting ever closer, I promise you that. All about an entrepreneur's biggest faux power and how they transform it into success. And Greg certainly transformed his mistake into success. It surrounds this idea of getting into business and not niching and narrowing down your user base. He um, had a fantastic service. He partnered with somebody. They provided a great service to people. It was fantastic and it worked, but they didn't really know who they wanted to target. It was all in aid of small businesses. But when you say small businesses, what the hell does that mean? There are a lot of small businesses. There are dry cleaners, restaurants, bars, hairdressers, and every other such. And as such, he basically went from one to the other and found it difficult to relate to customers because they wanted to know that he appreciated their industry, not just all industries. But his portfolio was one hairdresser, one butcher, one candlestick maker. And eventually the money ran out just as they started to get it right. So he shows his um, thoughts about niching and really narrowing down your focus. And it's something that is super applicable to all entrepreneurs, new and old, experienced or not. I took a great deal from this chat. I know you will too. So I'm going to stop chatting and get straight into those marvelous um, words of Greg. And I'm going to, before I do, share a little bio in his honor, which I wrote. So here we go. I want you to learn about Mr. Hickman. Greg Hickman is obsessed with mobile and automation and he wants you to become obsessed too. That isn't entirely true because you don't need to be obsessed. Simply recognize that automating parts of your business is important, but mobile continues to form a more and more vital aspect of your world. Leave the rest to Greg in his wise words for however you devour them. Words, podcasts, hire him. He'll set you on a stellar path. He also happens to share his journey for all who wishes to, and it's transparent like this I can jump on board with. As he progresses and grows mobile marketing engine, he's here to show you the full ins and outs. A guy with a story and a guy with a story. I'm proud to follow. Here's Greg and me chatting shop. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. I'm delighted to have with me this evening Greg Hickman, who is the CEO and founder of mobile mixed which is all about helping small companies and online companies rock out their mobile marketing and more other things it's a great podcast too greg is a bit of a master when it comes to blogging podcasting speaking and all things online and cool stuff like that so first of all greg thank you so much for joining me thanks for having me man i really appreciate it Absolute pleasure. I cannot wait to unearth your juicy insight. For regular <laughs> watchers and listeners, it, you'll know it's all in aid of my book, The Success Mistake, which is all about an entrepreneur's great mistake and how they turned it around. Um, because I want you, Mr. On, Mr. or Mrs. Entrepreneur at home, to embrace mistakes like the successful folk do. But before we get to that story, I just want to pass it over to you, Greg, so you can, you know, share a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do in your daily in and out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and thanks again. Um, so I, like you said, I manage a blog uh, and podcast called Mobile Mixed, and um, I've been doing that now full time since December of 2013, um, but have been doing it since January of 2012. And um, I started it with the intention to. Uh, build a business through blogging and podcasting that would allow me to leave my full-time job, which it allowed me to do. 
Um, and you know, I come from a marketing background. I, out of college, I was working for a very large agency that represented a lot of big brands. And through that journey, uh, I made my way into mobile very early uh, for really what mobile meant at the time. So I got started in mobile marketing in 2005. And, uh, you know, the iPhone came out in 2007. So, you know, a lot of people think that mobile didn't really start until, you know, the iPhone came out. But uh, we were doing text message marketing uh, for a bunch of professional sports teams and brands for quite some time. And, you know, at that point, I kind of fell in love with with mobile as a marketing channel and vehicle. And from there, I went to another company where I was doing some mobile uh, stuff. Then I started my own consulting company and text message marketing software, which turned out to be a failure, uh, which we'll talk about. Uh, and then from there, I actually um, had to take a full-time job and was working for a media company doing all of their mobile marketing strategy and all that stuff. And that's when Mobile Mixed was born kind of out of the learnings from the mistake of this failed company. And uh, then I worked for a very large brand, all while building Mobile Mixed on the side. And like I said, now I'm able to do that full time. And Mobile Mixed is a mix between um, online training for people that want to start their own mobile marketing business, people that want to use mobile to generate leads and sales for their business, and then I also have kind of a service-based consulting company that's kind of on the back end of that, that I do a handful of that work as well. Um, sort of like it's, it's a mix between mobile marketing consulting and also business coaching. So uh, kind of a hybrid there. It's not all just mobile marketing coaching. But um, yeah, so, you know, kind of been finding my way uh, for, you know, the last couple of years as I was building this business on the side and finally took it full time. Um, what I quite often find when I speak to um, consultants and coaches, especially in the online sphere, is the more mistakes you've made on your own path, the better, mm -hmm. because yeah. it makes you a better coach. You're able to say, well, you don't want to do this because I did that, you know, three years ago and it didn't work out well. So instead, you may want to do this. <laughs> and it gives you yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's it's for the lack of a better word, people looking for more of a, a sh not I don't want to say shortcut, but like an accelerated growth. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you've been, if you are where I want to be uh, and you've made a bunch of mistakes and you can tell me which ones those are and how do I avoid them, you know, at least I could be, I could be saving myself a whole lot of time, which is, you know, obviously one of the greatest assets that we have. Absolutely. And it's great to meet someone who is there with the mobile marketing sphere from the beginning because it's gone down quite a few iterations already, even though it's only really been around for not even 10 years. It's crazy to think. But I remember those days before the app was really born and it was very text message based and Bluetooth messaging was really big yeah. for a short time. And people were trying to, you know, make mobile <laughs> work. And it went through quite a few stages before, well, I suppose ultimately the iPhone came along and made the app king and now... Well, the saying goes, there's an app for everything, and I don't think that's too yeah. far off course. Uh, yeah, it's true. And I mean, and it's definitely evolved to the point where, you know, there's a lot of different aspects of mobile, not just mm -hmm. apps, and how they all combine together to kind of help move a customer through that, that shopping funnel. Uh, it, it's pretty interesting stuff from like, you know, just yeah. a usage, be, usage behavior standpoint. I mean, a lot of us will look for things on our phone, then we go buy them in the store. We'll be in the store, we'll look for something on our phone and we'll buy it on our phone because we can find it cheaper. So, you know, there's just these different touch points within the whole kind of shopping experience that mobile really has a big impact on. So, Yeah, and absolutely. And I think with the increased usability of things like NFC, it's making it more and more mm -hmm. exciting for brands, especially those on that point of sale. I mean, you say your background's in marketing, mine is too, so stuff like that does fascinate me because it's the yeah. idea of being able to communicate with people while it's hot. Right, you right, know, right. If you're in exactly. a shop and you're looking at a shirt and then in the there and there a message pops up on your phone and gives you some kind of discount, that yeah, kind yeah. of thing is just going to hook people. And that's very exciting for the future, although it will probably used for evil like so yeah. many things in marketing are eventually. But yes, in the beginning, it's it always be. fresh and cool. So we enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I could talk about that for a long time because, um, you know, you put a couple of marketers who like that kind of thing in a room, there's going to be lots of discussions. But we'll try and keep it on the topic of great yeah. mistakes. 
And yeah, that is basically what the success mistake is all about. So I'm going to cut to the chase, pass it over to you. I'm going to allow you to tell us that juicy story of yours. It sounds like it's going to be from that first <laughs> business. So I'm excited yeah, yeah. to hear about it. And yeah, just tell us about how it happens, what you did yeah. and the journey it's taken you since. Yeah, for sure. So um, like I said, you know, I got started in the mobile space early and because of that, uh, myself and my partner of this company, we had used and experienced a lot of the different text message marketing platforms that were out there uh, at the time. And there was, you know, there was a handful and we kind of always kept our eye on which ones we liked, which ones were doing things, but we never really found one that was doing exactly everything that we thought it could be. So we approached building our own, found a developer to help us build it and got started there. And, you know, this is kind of where the problem started was we wanted to build a text message marketing platform for small business owners and you know small business owners although it sounds like it's pretty targeted that that is not targeted really at all there's tons of different types of small business owners so we were building this platform with a very wide type uh, wide net for who our customer would actually be so we had this platform we went out we were selling it we had bike shops, coffee shops, restaurants, salons, you know, golf courses, all these different types of businesses using it, but like one of each of those categories. And, you know, we'd, we'd sit down with, you know, another restaurant and, you know, the common conversation was, you know, do you understand my business as a restaurant owner? And, you know, we were only working with one other restaurant. So we really never took the time to dive into and step into that customer's shoes to really understand what their business was about, what made them successful, what were their pain points. And we just kind of were working with all these different types of businesses. And really, there was a lack of focus. And because of that, we had a very um, fragmented sales effort um, on how to go get clients. And it was very, very difficult because every single person basically felt like we didn't understand their business because we weren't focused on any particular type of niche. You know, we weren't like the mobile restaurant guys or the mobile salon guys. We were just like, though, we want to serve every single company because we think we can mobile guys, you know, and that's not how you go about business. At least I didn't, I mean, I didn't know that at the time, but that's what we were trying to do. We had a, a very good platform, but if we had focused on, you know, who we were serving with that platform, we would have made features and functionality specific to that person that would have been like, you know, out of this world for that type of audience. But we never went that deep within each category. So um, after a long time of trying to sell and not really get results, we finally started realizing that, hey, we need to pick, um, you know, something. So we picked golf courses through a relationship that we had had and we finally started gaining a little bit of momentum, but it was a little bit too late. Uh, I had run out of some funds and um, I needed to take a full-time job. The other two guys were doing it on the side at the time. So uh, kind of as we, I took this full-time job and we just kept trying to do it on the side, you know, it was just sort of like a little bit too late and, you know, I was burnt out. It was like two and a half years of, you know, just kind of making ends meet. Uh, with this company trying to get it off the ground and finally just said, you know what, I need to I need to cut ties with this and move on to the next thing. And uh, kind of in hindsight, when I looked back, like the amount of time we wasted by just thinking we were the provider for any type of small business, like crushed us, you know. So now, like, I'm very focused on, you know, who am I serving what specific pain do they have and what can I do to solve it and go like very deep within a specific category. And that's what I train too. Like I said, I, I teach people how to start their own mobile marketing business and they all start the same way. They're like, oh, like I'm going after this small business, this restaurant, you know, this, this coffee shop, everything. And I'm like, no, 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 like stop, like pick one type of business and go after all of them until you have as many of them as you possibly can. And you've learned so much about this business that you are the mobile guy for restaurants or what have you. And then slowly expand into other you know, industries. And that's the way you're going to see success. 
just because once I actually focused on who I was serving and really understanding what they their pain point is, I was finally able to create products that uh, you know catered to their needs and made selling a whole lot easier. Uh, but I definitely lost like two and a half, three years. I feel like kind of just trying to make this company work. And, you know, once we figured out that was kind of the thing, you know, it dragged on a little bit longer just because I was like, you know, this is my baby. I can't let go. Uh, but it, it was just, you know, a little too late and I was just ready to move on to something else. And that's when when Mobile Mixed was born. Right, right. And, I, and I'm guessing you've come across this like I have been a marketer where you speak to, you know, your boss or your another business owner and, you, you know, you ask me, it's like, who's your customer? Like, who do you want to ultimately target? And the answer mm. is, you know, well, everyone, you know, we can, you know, provide so many things to so many different people. You know, we don't want to kind of cut his ties and alienate everyone. But from a, you know, from a marketing point of view to really succeed, mm. to an extent, you do have to alienate yourself from other people to really knock the nail on the head properly otherwise you're just going to be this master of none and that's the company that just plods along forever and a day because they don't have that expertise they're just you know an everyday joe whereas like you say if you can become the guy in a particular niche mm -hmm. people turn to you and then slowly but surely you can diversify and grow yeah and i mean it just like again it makes selling so much easier because when you go in to whatever type of business you're focused on and you know, you've been working with 50 others just like that, you know what their obstacles are. Like, you know what the challenges are and you know what to do to solve those problems. And the more that you can speak to that in your, your sales efforts, the more the prospect is going to believe that you're the person for them. And a lot of it comes down to, uh, I want to make sure that this is, this is stressed, the the language that they use mm. um, because like I think I could understand their problem but if I don't articulate the problem the way that they articulate it it's still not, they're they're still not going to sit there and say oh well he gets me like they're not going to say that but if you know you go into a small business owner and you start talking to them and and you know they say something like you know what every Tuesday stinks because it's the slowest day of the week and I'm losing money because I have to stay open, I have to pay the bills, I have to pay my employees to be here, we're just not getting enough customers. You know, and then if I can go back to the next person who has that same problem, be like, you know what, like, I, is Tuesday a, a tough day for you? And they go, yeah, I, I think so. It's like, isn't it hard when you have to pay your employees, you have to pay for your utilities, and you're just not driving enough customers in the door to actually pay for all of this? Like, it's just the slowest day of the week. Like, if you could make Tuesday, like your Fridays, wouldn't, how would you feel about your business? And they'd be like, oh my God, like that would be awesome. Like at that point you've like, okay, like they get that you get what they're dealing with and it makes the sale so much easier. Yeah. And in that sense, every time you have a new meeting, every time you do a new client, you're, you're creating this backlog of ideas, you know, you're creating mm -hmm. a portfolio and you're perfecting your pitch all the time. Whereas if you're going from one business owner to another, you know, like you say, for a restaurant, Tuesday might be a bad day, for, but for, a, you know, a hairdresser, it might be Friday or Saturday, in which case yeah, yeah. you're never, you're not gaining any knowledge. You're just repeating the same process to everyone and getting nowhere. Yeah, it's a little bit of psychology, you know, too. It's like, you know, you if you know what pain they have and you can like hit that pain, but then hit it with the point where you could you, you're the reason it could be eliminated you know you're you're going to have a much better chance of of selling that client and getting them in in the door so you know really just understanding how they operate how they speak the words they use the pain they feel um the things that they wish they had that would make their business better um you know like a lot of small business owners you know you could talk about bringing in more customers and all that stuff. But sometimes you hit, you find those, those small business owners that all they want is things to run smoother so that they can like spend more time with their kids, you know? And, you know, if that's something that you talk about in your sales process, you know, and that's something that that owner is like genuinely feeling, you know, you're going to get through to them. You know, like imagine I can implement this solution for you 
And, you know, at the end of 30 days, you're going to be able to have, you know, four more hours every single week that you can spend with your kids. Cause I know you really want to spend more time with your kids. Like they're going to be like, uh, yeah, like that's exactly what I want. I want to spend less time working over this business that I thought was going to give me this freedom. And now it's not, you know, so it, it depends on who you're talking to and you have to get used to really asking the right questions and listening to what they say and then reusing that in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, it's the psychology. You want to become the guy that people turn to. So just right. going back to when you started the business, um, mm -hmm. I mean, how did you approach the research? Were you in a mindset of like, we just need to try and get as many customers as, as possible? Did you think that, you know, did you do the research and thought there's a market here for small businesses? Or in hindsight, did you feel you overlooked that side of things? Um, we definitely, I mean, so my background was coming from more like enterprise brands and we didn't see a lot of people doing the small business thing well. So that's why we wanted to go after a small business at first, but we didn't, I didn't myself and I don't think the rest of the team realized that that wasn't niche enough, you know, like at least early on, you know, we we're like, Oh, small business. Like they all have the same problems, you know, which a lot of them sort of do, but the solutions and the way you pitch it and the way it looks and feels like could be completely different. So yeah, we just, we thought small business was narrow enough and it, and it just wasn't, um, until way too late. We kind of had that golf focus, which is when we finally started getting traction. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a struggle. <laughs> it was definitely a struggle. Yeah, because I think it's something that a lot of small business owners and new entrepreneurs and everything like that suffer with early on because, you know, you, you're scared to be in a niche. You talk about mastering a niche, but that's quite scary because you think, well, maybe I will become the master of this particular niche, but what if it's not big enough? What if there's not enough people in there to fund me? And, you know, what if um, I'm not the perfect guy for that niche and I'm just mm -hmm. casting my net too small because... You know, that might be scary if you if you're going after small business owners, you've got a fairly large net. But if you're only going after small restaurants in a particular area of town, then that net's quite small. And if you don't hit it off straight away, then you're left with li little traction to go you're left with little place to go afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely something that comes up, you know, it's uh, it, like you could, I feel like when it comes to execution, like some of that stuff, you know, just seems to slip your mind. You know, you're like, oh, we got to get the next client and you're willing to talk to anybody. Someone makes an introduction for you. That's a restaurant. When you're like trying to go after golf courses, then you go have the conversation with the restaurant. And then all of a sudden now the restaurant's super involved. And now you're taking like feature requests from the restaurant when like you're really trying to serve the golf course, you know, it's like, it's just, you just start getting pulled in these different directions that, um, you know, kind of creates this lack of clarity, uh, both in the product, the service, and just the sales effort. You think all that kind of comes back to, you know, the vision of the company as well, because if you don't have a really defined vision of where you want it to go, sometimes it's easier to go down these darkened paths. You know, you think, well, the restaurants come calling. So we could help a restaurant out because they're going to pay and we need to go down there. Yeah. Because if you've got a vision, you can think, wait, it's not going to help us get to the end goal. So we need to take a step back and reevaluate where we are. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, um, it has a lot to do with the vision. Um, I think it also has a lot to do with like, who do you really want to help? Like, who are you out there to help? Who are you out there to, to serve? which is another way of approaching it, you know, like you could be going after restaurants or you could be going after like service based businesses. Like you can niche, you can niche down like multiple types of ways. Um, you could do, you know, service based businesses in your geographic region, you know, or that have X locations, you know, so you're not dealing with like mom and pops. Like there's a lot of different ways um, you can, you can go after it. I think, you know, for everyone, it's going to be different, like who they want to serve. Like, you know, I knew a lot of small business owners. I was never one. And, you know, it seemed like they were always struggling. And I, you know, kind of, I guess, kind of deep down, always wanted to like be able to help them. So like I was saying small business owners, but I knew a lot of different types of small business owners. So maybe that has something to do with it. You know, it's just who I was, who I was able to help and see like struggling that, 
those are the types of people that I wanted to help. And I never just looked beyond them being a small business owner. Like, well, what type of small business owner are they? Uh, kind of just overlooked, overlooked it. And, you know, can't honestly say that I would have known to look at it in the first place. You know, I thought that we were going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love how you say now that when you go forward, you're always thinking about, right, who am I serving and truly understanding who that person is rather than coming at it from a business point of view. Because it sounds mm. now, rather than looking at it like, okay, we're going to go after restaurants or we're going to go after, you know, small business or anything like that, it'd be more a case of we're going to target the, you know, the small business owner who is struggling with, you know, this particular issue. And whether mm -hmm. they happen to own a restaurant or a garage or a hairdresser or anything like that, we're going to be able to uh, yeah. help this kind of individual with this kind of problem. And I think that is an, a good way of approaching it because straight away you're connecting with people's problems and their feelings mm -hmm. rather than just trying to fulfill a need of some tangible business. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, a lot of that ends up being like why we do what we do, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you end up, being fulfilled by helping certain types of people. And if you know, you're just in it for the money and you don't even enjoy the people that you're helping and the results that you're creating, you know, you're definitely going to have, I think, you know, I, I haven't been in business long enough to say, but from what I've heard and you know, what I feel like, I feel like I would just get tired of doing it because it was just about money. Not like the emails that I get after helping someone and like thanking me from the bottom of their heart, you know, like that's, that's like a great feeling to have when you get that. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you approach it now then? Um, you obviously, you try and really understand when you're starting a new project or a campaign thinking, right, you know, I really need to understand this person. I need to understand what their issues are. And I'm assuming you take a similar kind of approach when you're working with a new client and you're coaching them. You try and get into their mindset and understand the people they're trying to fix. What kind of things do you do to, you know, get into that mindset? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of asking questions and listening, um, you know, like through my, like right now through my business, anytime someone opts into my email list, you know, the first email that they get, it says, you know, what is one thing that you're struggling with right now and how can I help you or how, like what would help you, you know, get past that. And people answer, like a lot of people answer that question. And that's like constantly giving me feedback as to what is the pain that they have. And if they like had this magic wand, essentially, what would the magic wand, like, how would it make it better? Like, what would make it better? And when you start hearing those answers, um, you really start to understand, like, well, what is everyone struggling with? Like, I survey my audience a lot. Uh, I, when I off my podcast, um, if I interview someone or if I have a specific, um, like, topic, I'll create a unique download for that episode and I'll promote it in the podcast. So like, I mean, now at this point I have like, you know, 50 to a hundred different types of, you know, lead magnets, so to speak. And I just look and see which ones are get down, which ones get downloaded the most. And, you know, if, if everyone's downloading the, you know, how to build your email list with text messaging and nobody's, nobody's downloading the, you know, how to use mobile video, then I, one, should talk more about how to use text messaging to build your email list. And two, maybe I can make a product or a service on just that. And, you know, then I can go out and say, hey, like, and this is exactly what I did with the, the, training, the training program that I have for the people that want to build their own business. I did a survey and said, you know, you know, kind of give me an explanation of who you are. Are you, you know, in, do you work in an agency and like you're now responsible for the mobile efforts or are you a, like a consultant and you want to sell mobile services and make your own mobile marketing business? And most of the people that came back wanted to make their own mobile marketing business. So, um, you know, and then questions on that survey were like, well, what would help you do that? Like multimedia training, you know, interviews, et cetera. And like, you know, after you look at the results, it seemed like they wanted a multimedia training program that helped them build their business. So, I went back and I said, hey, everybody, like, here are the results from the survey. Uh, I'm going to build this thing. Here's what it's going to include. But I'm not going to build it unless you really want this. So uh, if you buy right now, um, I'll make it in the next 30 to 60 days. And you'll get this discounted price, lifetime access. And I'll hold a one-on-one -on -one call with you every single week until it's live. 
and I gave them a big discount and I brought in a handful of people that paid me and I said, okay, a bunch of people paid me money. That validates that I should make this thing. And then I spent the effort on building it, you know? So uh, the more that people can like validate by actually having people pay them, I think is really, really important. And I know a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs alike, and I'm guilty of this sometimes too, is, you know, going out there and being like, hey, would you buy this? And people are like, yeah, because they're your friends yeah. and they're not going to be mean to you. And then you spend all your time and money building this thing. And then when you say, hey, like, well, give me the money for it. And they're like, no, nah, like, I don't really want that. And you're like, but you said you want it. Like, until they hand you money for it, like, they don't want it. So, like, that's kind of the mentality that I take. So, you know, I really try to make sure that I'm validating that what I've you know, collected from a data perspective, like that I think that they want, I present it to them in a potentially packaged offer at a great price. And if they don't buy it, then I'm not going to waste my time creating it, you know? So, uh, I try to do that as much as possible. And I mean, it worked. So, I, you know, I, suppose, gonna... <laughs> I suppose it just comes down to, you know, listening. I always remember yeah. um, Brian Clark saying one of the ways they built, copy blogging in the way they did was he just listened and not even a case of like asking questions but just listening and and lurking around the comments seeing what people yeah. were saying seeing what kind of things kept coming up and after a while it was like yeah. oh well this keeps coming up so we'll build this kind of product and like you say you know then involve people validate the idea and if it's strong you go with it if it's not you cut ties and you move on to the next idea but until you start listening you're ultimately just listening to your own mind. And I always find that that can be a very dangerous thing indeed. At least when I listen to my own mind and nothing else. Yeah. It's pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, for those listening and watching, um, you know, you might be saying to yourself, um, but what if I don't have an audience yet? Or, you know, what if I don't have this pe these people to ask? Kind of to your point of like lurking around and like listening. I mean, I can't tell you how many Facebook groups I'm in for podcasters. Like I could literally go into any one of those groups and just look through months and months worth of commentary and just start seeing like, are there any trends of people saying like, ah, oh, I wish I had this or, ah, oh, this is so annoying, you know, and just start looking for what things, what questions are people asking? Like, are there any consistent, consistent questions being asked? And if so, like then you, that's like a start to getting into maybe what you should be talking about or a product you can create because there's people that are sitting there expressing this problem. I go into um, Quora.com and you know type in mobile and I look at the questions people are asking and I look at the answers and you know I definitely spend some time just like looking around LinkedIn groups, you know all these different groups where people are asking questions. Like just once you know who you want to serve find the groups that they're that they might be in whether it's facebook groups linkedin groups quora meetup.com locally like any meetings in your neighborhood like go to where those people would hang out and listen to the things that they're asking and you'll be well on your way to offering something that they're likely to want yeah no i agree with that i think it's fantastic advice and, and like you say you know just be open just listen to things and yeah, sure. find the people you want to serve, find out where they are, and then uncover what their issue is. Yeah, so yeah. before we finish up, if you could just offer one piece of advice to the business owner who's just starting out, they're where you were a few years ago, yeah, yeah. They, they think they've kind of got it narrowed down, but now they're listening to what you've just said and going, actually, maybe, maybe it isn't as niche as I thought it was. I could probably go through... And narrow this down a little bit more. What what one actionable tip would you give to help them get on their road today? Yeah, so I mean, I think I've drilled home the the know your customer or your a potential customer. So I'm going to kind of divert from that a tiny bit. Um, and it's one thing that I come across a lot, and whether it's in regards to you know who do I focus on or how do I get started, a lot of people. I think don't start because they haven't found that thing that they're passionate about. And they're like, well, like I haven't found my passion yet. Well, you can't wait around for your passion to come either. So like take the skill set that you already have and find a way to offer it to people where you'll get paid for it and just keep iterating. And as you keep doing that, you're going to find out 
and uncover your passion. Like it will, it will, it will find you like, but just don't wait for it. Cause that's not going to happen. Like get out there, start doing something, anything, leveraging the skills, you knowledge you already have. Cause we all know that you already have talent, um, and something to offer, start offering it and then be sure that you're kind of paying attention to what you like, what you don't like, you know, did you see an opportunity open up that really interests you? Like all of these things that, you know, that could start presenting themselves. I guarantee you doors will open if you just get started. Mm. No, I agree with that so much. And I actually just read a post slash email from Noah Kagan the other day, and it was talking about successful people. You know, the difference between successful people and unsuccessful people, more often than not, are the successful ones take action into their own hands. They mm -hmm. say, I'm not going to wait for it to happen. I'm going to go and find it myself. And like you say, if you find something that you vaguely like and then you keep digging and iterating, eventually that passion will be found and you'll work on things you absolutely love and get up in the morning for. Yeah, I, I love following no I, I love following Noah's content. It's really good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I always um, have a little smile when his emails come in. Which yeah. I can't say about every email that comes into me. Yeah, yeah. So that's a talent in itself. Well, yeah. Greg, it's been an absolute pleasure. Wow, great, great words, great wisdom, and it's fantastic to see your journey. You were even though you were in the mobile industry while it was still new. So people would have this thing, well, you know, this guy will know the ins and outs. He's an expert. He was bound to have started, you know, running, no problems whatsoever, but it isn't always the case. And I'm a firm believer in finding your niche and it might take a little while, but if you can really hone in on that and get yeah. those people's issues to a T, good things begin to happen. I think you're proving it then some these days. So thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And thank you, viewer slash listener, for watching slash listening. So, cheers. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you ever so much for joining me on today's session of the Purple Coffee Podcast. And a big thanks to Greg for being part of this show and the book also. What a fine tale. It's something I feel the majority of entrepreneurs can nod their head along to. We start off with an idea and think, I want to serve this particular type of person. But you're a bit w worried about niching down too much because, well, niching means you're neglecting a massive um, piece of the pie. But it is an important thing that you have to do. And if you don't niche, well, trouble lies ahead. So hopefully Greg's wise words help you a great deal. They helped me and I encourage you to check out Greg's world. I've put all these show all these links down as well as the show notes at tdog.co forward slash purple coffee 51. That's tdog.co forward slash purple coffee 51. Check it out and whilst there please consider subscribing and such and leaving a review on iTunes. That means a great deal to a podcaster like me. And other than that I'm going to let you get back to your day. It's been a fantastic edition. Thank you so much for joining me and a big thanks to Greg once more. Check him out. He's awesome. Not only to do with mobile marketing and automating your business but well just his entire transparent model is a breath of fresh air. Yes, that's right, breath of fresh air. I got that right. So, yeah, check him out. It's a fantastic journey to follow. I'm following it. I hope you'll join me too. Cheers and have a great one.